Welcome to episode two of How I Vlog While Writing. So in the last episode, I talked about the different camera gear that is available for you when you are riding. But my particular choice is the Osmo Action, which is an action camera. Um, I talked about that camera and how I use it while I ride and some of the logistics that go along with it. And then also I talked about audio and why I use different types of audio, such as the lav mic that I'm using now versus one that is primarily through um, the action camera. Today, I'm going to show you guys um, how to set up the camera before you actually start recording and also transferring that footage into your uh, computer and then editing it through Premiere Pro. So I'm going to use the software Premiere Pro because that's what I am uh, pretty comfortable using. So let's get started. I have my camera here. So if you, um, I want you to, I want to show you guys what settings I use. So I don't know if you could see this a little better, um, but I'm going to swipe from the right there um, and I adjust my ISO. So my motto is just keep it simple and I have it at auto and set to ISO max of 100. Now, if you, if you're familiar at all with um, photography or videography, uh, you, know, you know that as you increase the ISO, there's going to be uh, an increase of noise or your, your footage is going to be more grainier. So if it's a sunny day, you don't really need to have the ISO any more than 100. Um, sometimes you can go into manual if you want to get some specific shot, let's say some sort of B-roll. So you can adjust the ISO and the shutter speed if you wanted to do that. But for the sake of simplicity, almost all the time I use auto and then I just have it set to 100. So the next thing is um, setting the other different settings in your camera. So you're going to set, you're going to press this button here where it has a little camera icon and then you're going to do white balance. It depends on what type of white balance you would like to achieve. Um, you can do custom and there are different tutorials on what white balance is the best for the condition that you're shooting. I used to play around with the, uh, um, with the white balance before, but I found it too annoying to switch, especially when it starts off being cloudy and it gets sunny and then it gets cloudy again. And so conditions change when you're outside riding for a, a certain length of time. So um, I actually just prefer the auto. The next is color. So most people love the, you know, the color, the natural color uh, that either the GoPro or the um, Osmo Action has. I actually set it to de like which makes it more flatter. And so that flat footage, you can actually do a lot with post-production on Premiere Pro or whatever editing software you have. Another thing that I also change is the de-warp. I am not a big fan of that fisheye lens kind of look. So if you have the de-warp off, you're going to start to see, you can't see it here in this footage, but you're going to see kind of that fisheye lens effect. And I am, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, of course, you can also include, you can, you can switch it on or you can switch it off if you want to get more of the landscape. But I almost always uh, just turn that on. So that's pretty much what I have. So auto white balance, uh, color is set to de like and I have the de-warp set to on. I also have my camera set to 2.7K uh, at 50 frame rates per second. It's a great in-between between the 1080 and the 4K. The reason for that is shooting at 4K uses up a lot of or takes up a lot of the a memory in my memory card. A lot of the footage you can actually get really good results from 2.7K. So uh, those are my settings before I actually start writing. The next thing I want to show you guys is transferring that footage uh, into Premiere Pro and some of the editing techniques that I use to capture different parts of the video to make it look interesting. So I'm going to show you guys how that works on Premiere Pro. 
So here we are on Premiere Pro, and I have a couple of selected items of uh, clips that I found from my old files. So um, I'm going to show you guys color grading and the easiest way that I, the best way that I do to color grade, uh, meaning making the footage, because right now it's pretty flat. The grays are gray. I mean, the colors are not as vibrant. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go on the left side here in the bottom left, and I'm going to hit new item and adjustment layer. Okay, and the adjustment layer will adjust to the size of the footage that you have. And so what I'm going to do is take that and put it right above the clips, okay, that I want it affected. And then I'm going to select adjustment layer. And then up here, yours might be a little different, but up here I have. Um, couple of tabs and one happens to be color. So I'm going to go ahead and select color. And then I'm going to on the left top left hand side, I'm going to hit Lumetri scopes. So this information will tell you the levels of um, blacks, white shadows, um, and so on. So I'm going to start with blacks first. I'm going to select a uh, part of the footage there. And I want to make sure that the blacks are going to be at zero, close to zero. And then the next thing is we're going to do whites. And so with whites, I want to make sure that most of that part of the clip is at 100. And then the next is the shadow. So we want to make sure that the middle portion kind of stays somewhere here in the middle. And then next thing is you're going to select your white balance. So up here where it says white balance, that's white balance selector. So you're going to select somewhere in the footage where there is white and we see the white lines of the road, which is really close to Jason. So we're going to, we can even zoom in a little bit actually. 100. Okay. And then we're going to select that area where it's white. So. From there, um, this should change the temperature, but they're both at zero. That means um, the white balance was actually correct in that footage. Now you can play around with the exposure uh, and the contrast and the highlights. And so I like to play around with the contrast, bring up the highlight a little bit, not too much. Actually, it was a pretty bright day that day. If you drop the highlights, you get, you get really the boost of the blue uh, sky. And if you increase the highlights, you know, it's a lot brighter. Obviously, I don't want to do that. I actually want to bring it back down to zero. Uh, and then the next thing is going to creative. And then from the creative part is where we can really, um, like what it says, get creative. So I actually lower the sharpen a little bit. And then the, the vibrance is where I add a little bit more color to the footage. So that means it really is boosting those colors. And so, and then the next thing I want to do is move the saturation a little bit too saturated. Um, then you get like this skin, my skin tones a little off. So, um, just a little bit so that you get some color there. I don't want too much saturation or too much vibrance. So if I play the footage from the beginning, okay, that's what it looks like. And then that is actually being applied to all the clips in the video. Next is the Gaussian blur effect. And what the Gaussian blur effect does is add some depth of field to uh, your subject. So if you look at this clip here, uh, notice how I'm talking and you can actually see from the background, the trees. If you want some, interest in your videos. This is one effect that you could use to hack your action camera footage, because like I said earlier, action cameras have a fixed lens. And so they don't actually focus on the subject. It doesn't follow the subject to focus on it. So bottom left-hand side, we're going to scroll over and find effects. And then you're going to type in Gaussian blur. Okay, it's down here and you're going to drag that to the clip that you want that blur to take place. Okay, so once you drag and drop it in there, you could see the FX has now turned purple. Nothing's happened to the, the footage or the clip yet, so which is 
fine. Okay, we don't want anything to happen to it yet. Um, so now what we're going to do is go into the top left and, and select effect controls. And that's where Gaussian blur is. Simplest way to do this is uh, select the circle. Okay, and I actually use the circle to kind of focus on my face because for the most part, um, I'm usually pretty good with holding the camera center to my face. Uh, and then from here, you're going to select inverted. So that means um, the background is going to be blurry. And then for blurriness, sometimes I go with 10, sometimes I go with 15, and it depends on how I want it to look. So 10 is usually pretty good. So um, it's not quite there yet because here you can actually see this is clear and then it gets blurry. So you want something else to happen. So let's select mask one again and you want to feather it. And so feathering it allows that gradual change uh, in the blurriness. So let's click out of that and see what that looks like. It's a little better. Okay, and you can actually play around with this to see what works best for you and which what you like better. Okay, and play just the clip. Okay, you can start to see that that is what that Gaussian blur effect does. So what we get here is that depth of field. We have a blurry background and the subject itself is in focus. So that is one hack that I use to edit my action camera footage. Well, there you have it. That's how I go about editing my videos. It's not 100% foolproof. Some of you may take little bits and pieces of it and use it to make your videos interesting. Um, a lot of it I learned through YouTube tutorials on how to use Premiere Pro. Um, what I have is just pretty simple because that's pretty much my motto. So safety first, adventure, and then edit these videos, these adventures. Um, so that's it for today. Um, if you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for those of you who have subscribed. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye.